boys. I oh, no. uh, ruined the bit right there. Uh, trying to make some cheddar. Whatever. Fucking this up. I got some cheddar cheese. Right, boys. We're gonna teach you how to pass funded trader challenges, FTMO, my forex funds, whatever it is. Let's quickly look at some proof to make sure I'm not talking about my ass that I actually know what the fuck I'm doing. Let's look at it. All right, as uh, usual, um, I'm gonna show you exactly. This is a clear proof uh, that over the past two weeks of the start of August here, um, I was able to make 15%. Uh, there's a 5% uh, drawdown that's well within the range of the FTMO requirements. And uh, I'm hitting about uh, an 80% hit rate on this, right? So that's pretty damn good, right? Now, some of you um, that are nice and have good eyes, you know, you might be looking, hey, you can see the calendar um, that it's actually not the middle of August right now that I'm posting this. And you will be right. It's actually near the end of August. And why did I do that? It's um, clearly uh, because this looks better and I ended up losing a little bit of money, right? So let's refresh this. And so for the rest of August, I had actually stayed about the same. And again, uh, we're gonna be blurring this out. We're gonna be blurring out the size. My drawdown dropped just a little bit because I had this one really fucked up day. Um, but that's completely fine. And then you know what? I took a long break. So this is part of the reason why I cut this out is because I took a 10 day break. I went on vacation once again, because that's what I do because I'm trading all the time and I just want to take breaks. Anyways, either way, we're still able to maintain that profit throughout August, 15% in one month, perfectly fine, 7% drawdown. I'm happy with that. So now I'll show you some sort of example that you can actually see that I know what I'm talking about. Let's actually just get on with it because I know you guys are fucking impatient. You watch YouTube videos because you have an attention span barely longer than those of the TikTok viewers. TikTok viewers, I have about six seconds to gather your attention. YouTube, I got about one minute. You guys are a little bit higher class, so I'll treat you with a little bit more respect. Let's jump into something that's going to be of value to you. Okay, we see Bitcoin once again crashing. Who gives a fuck? We're in a short right now, whatever, let it run. Okay, so we're not talking about Bitcoin right now. Speaking of Bitcoin, if you guys do want to jump into a funded trader challenge that is crypto based, there's a new prop firm coming out, maventrading.co, check it out. It will be coming soon. It is in the description. Uh, there will be a link to their uh, Discord so that you guys can check out the rules and everything like that. Uh, that is a funded trader challenge that I will prove to you that I can pass perfectly well and fine. And then that will be a really easy way to get yourself funded. Speaking of Forex for now, the reason we're able to trade so, so profitably uh, throughout the month of August and the previous months throughout the year is because we're really taking advantage of the session opens. This is what I really suggest you guys do. If you guys want to pass a funded trade challenge, something along those lines using uh, FTMO or whatever, I really highly suggest you pick one pair and you just look at the session opens. I do the two, I do EU and I do GU. And basically all I'm doing is you're gonna have the highest probability, the highest volume uh, and everything in those session opens. So what we do is we look one hour before uh, the London open. That's usually when the German open starts up and there's a little bit of volume coming in. There's sometimes a negative move in the opposite direction of the actual true move uh, for the day. Uh, and then that runs, there's about three moves throughout the London session. So if you guys take a picture, you can see there's generally one in the London open here, and then there's one set up usually kind of in this mid range. And then there's another, um, another setup in before the London close. London closes right in this blue area right there, right? So there's a lot of volume coming in there. So let's just delete some of the stuff and let's just kind of go about a day of how we would be taking these trades. And you're gonna see that you're gonna be able to get two, three trades a day, which is gonna be completely sufficient in order to pass uh, one of these funded trader programs. So let's just look back. Uh, let's let's do GU um, yesterday, how about, right? All right? What's going on with GU yesterday? Let's look at the higher time frames. Clearly a downtrend on the higher time frame daily. Let's look at the four hour, right? Coming into the London open, we see that we're failing to gain the new high here, right? So that's a swing failure pattern in my opinion. A lot of you guys, uh, smart money, uh, concept traders, you're like, oh, that's not a sweep. That's not nothing. That's that's just uh, trying to make a new high and it's going to, I don't know. This is completely obviously a failure to gain. Uh, smart money traders don't know what the fuck they're talking about. Uh, so this is how I trade, right? So we've made a failure to gain clearly. So we're gonna be looking for shorts coming into this open. Let's look at the one hour, make sure it's matching up well. One hour, same sort of thing, swing failure pattern on that level. So guys, it's always the exact same thing. You always gotta find the same sort of thing. We're looking for swing failure patterns. We're looking for continuations into trends and 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 and, and they're just following that trend until we get to a point of uh, a resistance that we would want to not be in that trade anymore. 
basically the, the lows of the range type thing. So let's say we, we broke this high here. We're now in the London Open and we're failing back down. Now then we don't wanna just enter a trade just uh, on the first initial setup because a lot of those times things are wrong. If you just entered a trade on the breakdown right here after we saw started seeing that swing failure pattern, it really wouldn't have given us anything. We wanted to wait for that one hour to close and that one hour closes on the, on the London Open itself here, not the German Open. The London Open right there, right? And then we come for the actual sweep and then the breakdown, right? So this is the trade that we would have wanted to be taking. And then that would have played down to those range lows. As you can see, we would have been targeting those range lows. You would have gotten about two and a half hour on that trade, right? There's another setup that appears just a few hours later. Let's look for the hourly closes. Another hourly close, say at one o'clock. Where's that one hour level after the hourly close? Right about there. We came back, retested it, made a, a fake out. There's the level, there's the fake out, and then the breakdown. Again, we're gonna take a trade, nice and easy, off that resistance rejection and then we're going to take that down this time this level's already been tested so clearly it's going to go a little bit further right and we're going to test a little bit lower and then we're going to be able to actually push down for, the, for these next ranges so that's the second trade third trade setup third trade setup you could be taking one minute trades coming in the new york open i like to do that but we're not talking about that here right now might as well just talk about the five minute trades pretty fucking easy again we're still looking at the swing failure pattern on the four hour another level of interest let's draw it out here on the one hour oops uh, let's draw out the level of interest on the one hour. Boom, right there. We can see coming in the New York Open, we see a rejection off that level and then a breakdown. Once again, it's always the same, guys. It's the exact same bullshit every single time. And that's just three trades in a row to the short side on the GU, right? That's what we did all fucking week. Uh, I traded this week two days. I made profit every single day. Um, looking back at it, I think I had two negative days the entire month uh, and I took about 10 days off, right? Uh, so we got a we got about an 80 percent profitability rate here uh so this shit don't don't fucking lie right and it, it, it's so so simple trade the high volume sessions don't trade like if you're in if you're in a session uh then maybe you want to trade a uj something like that but i really highly suggest you don't because they're stupid right guys i know this is kind of a repetitive video kind of shit i've talked about before but we're banging this one out what you're going to be looking for is a high time frame bias which direction do you think you're going to be going look for the swing failure patterns look for the trends things like this and then you're going to be looking for uh, levels of interest that you want to enter in on this could be swing highs this could be untested levels this could be you know where your dog took a shit and the price was at, at that current time whatever's meaningful for you and then you're going to be looking for some sort of entry pattern i like to use the breakdowns of uh continuing back into that main trend and then i just enter as simple as that guys that's all you're going to need check the link in the description there's going to be a funded trader challenge for you maventrading.co